Hello everyone, Lau here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a haul video. Yeah, um, uh, as you see I'm standing here and that I'm sitting in front of my desk. I, I just want to try to do it in a little bit of a different way this time for actually one reason and uh, that's I didn't want to like unbox the package because I wanted to have a look uh, at them at the stuff at first I uh, wanted to like fiddle, fiddle around with it want to get used to it and wanted to um, research a little bit better so I could show you the uh, toys really in detail and in a good condition and everything and not just me sitting in front of the desk showing it here in the camera stuff like that um, yeah uh, before we getting really into uh, the video, you have seen from the thumbnail and from uh, the description of the video that it's going to be a Shira Princess of Power, so a vintage toy haul. And if you're new to the channel, hi, I'm Lau, and um, I'm a vintage toy collector. Mostly the uh, girly vintage toys from the 80s and 90s. You see a lot of My Little Ponies behind me. I mean, that's my jam. But uh, I have branched out into other uh, vintage toys and today it's all about the Princess of Power toy line. And uh, yeah, if you enjoy that stuff then you maybe want to subscribe to my channel. I do um, at least once a week a video about vintage toys from like my childhood, so the 80s and 90s. And please um, also uh, click the bell icon so you get notified when I upload a new video because my um, videos for a lot of people, they don't show up on their YouTube feeds, on their normal subscription feeds. For some people, they do, but so maybe you also want to do that. And if you are already subscribed, maybe go to my channel and check if you are actually really still subscribed. Because that has happened to me for, for a different YouTuber, so I suddenly wasn't subscribed to this person anymore and I have no clue why. And someone else told this in case of my channel, so they said, well, no wonder I didn't get any notifications anymore because I wasn't subscribed anymore. I don't know if that's like a bug on YouTube that some people got kicked out of uh, the subscriptions or something. I don't know, maybe just you, maybe just check if you're thinking you're subscribed. Maybe check if you really are. Anyways, um, yeah, before we get into the haul, there is one other thing that I want to announce. Announce it, it, it's not really something serious or anything. It's just for the next uh, two weeks I will be on vacation so I won't upload normal like long videos. Uh, I, I, I thought about it because I have a couple of uh, videos filmed but I actually want to enjoy my holiday and not think about oh now the video is going up and I have to check if the comment section is open or not and I have to answer comments and stuff like that. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm instead going to uh, load up a couple of um, um, shorts because I've recently just started getting into this shorts thing. I am not really the biggest fan. Um, I will just make these super short like 15 seconds videos uh, for parts of my collection that you haven't seen for a long time or that I have changed a little bit up. So um, that will be during the next two or three weeks. So I don't know how fast I can be with a new normal video once I'm back. So I'm on vacation for two weeks. So. Just that you don't wonder like why I, I'm not making any new normal big videos uh, vacation. <laughs> yeah, let's get into the video. <clears throat> uh, Shira Princess of Power is a Mattel toy line from the 80s. Started in 84 and ran for three waves um, uh, until 1986, 87 I think was the last year. It is actually uh, the kind of girl uh, version of He-Man the Masters of the Universe and um, it's really iconic. It's, it wasn't part of my childhood because I'm born in 88 so it wasn't around anymore and I never encountered anything in my childhood, didn't watch the cartoon. But um, I once I found out about all of this, because I'm really also into like toy history and stuff like that, I was always really intrigued. I wanted to get a little bit more. Maybe I was hoping to find a one figure maybe at a flea market, never did. So last I think Christmas I bought myself my very first Shira figures and um, I have also bought one other lot, a small lot, uh, in the video where I also compared them to the Galoob uh, Golden Girl uh, toy line. So I can link that here. That's, that's, that's kind of an interesting comparison between two toy lines, but still my Shira collection was pretty small and I only had dolls. Um, that 
quite a, yeah, expensive if you get them online, especially here in Germany, I don't know. They're not really widely available. It seems it's, I mean, it's a long time ago, but you see definitely more ponies if you search for them online than you see Shira stuff. <clears throat> um, one day I went just on Instagram on my well, Sky Painter Toys Instagram, you can follow me over there as well, um, where I also tell you when I have a new video, but I also love toy photography and I follow a lot of people who do the same stuff. And um, one day, um, one people, one person on Instagram, uh, Moon Glow Dreams is her name, she uh, put a story up where she said, hey, I have this Shira lot for sale. Someone interested. Um, and I was like, oh man, she's from the US, so that's gonna get even more expensive. She was asking 170 um, dollars for this lot, which is actually a really good price considering what's all in it. Uh, but then, you know, shipping and um, then the import fees uh, from, because I'm from Germany, so it gets, it gets, it gets pretty expensive. And who, who knows if she has already sold it because, you know, but the story was just eight minutes old. So she has just uploaded the story eight minutes before and I was like, this is my chance. I should grab all of this because even though like we had to add a couple of, I don't know, maybe around 40, 45 euros, so $50 on shipping and then I had to pay even more at the door here when the package showed up. It is still so much worth. Uh, so yeah, I want to get a little bit closer with you on the um, parts that were all in there. So there's not just figurines, there's animals, there's some accessories, there's a mini comic. So let's have fun and have a look at the package and my first reactions and then you will see all of it in detail. Barbie. <laughs> That's not Shira. <laughs> uh, oh wow, so many of these wings. Oh my gosh. Oh, another pair. Uh, wow. Oh, and another pair. Accessories. This one. Okay. This one's probably the sticky one. She told me there's one that. Yeah, I can feel it. The plastic's breaking down on that one. So. Wow. Oh, I love it so much. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. Okay. So guys, <laughs> I have to sort this out at first. Um, I knew that I wanted to just give you a quick look at what this amazing box looks like. But um, I have to sort out what everything is. I have to clean everything. Oh my gosh. And then, wow. And then I can show it to you in detail. <gasps> Oh, 
High in the clouds in the land of Etheria in Crystal Castle lives beautiful Princess Adora. When danger threatens, she transforms into She-Ra, the Princess of Power, the most exciting and powerful woman in the universe. Here we have the original She-Ra figure from the very first wave. She obviously is not complete. She's missing her like mask crown thing that's like very famous that you could turn around. I mean, neither of my other She-Ra's has that, but um, yeah, this is the original cape and she has her sword. And to my knowledge, this also goes to her. So there's quite a lot of pieces that go to her and I'm really happy about it. The toy line had uh, three waves um, and in every one of those waves, uh, we had the main character, She-Ra, obviously. Uh, the first wave's from 1984. Um, and I have uh, a She-Ra, or actually two, that are from the second wave. I even think that this is the more uh, popular version, the Starburst Shira. And if you just look at the figure uh, from the face mold, uh, the mold of the body, how it's painted, the crystal in the middle, uh, even the hair where um, both of them have a little uh, darker streak of blonde in, in her hair, like in the hair on the right side. So also this one has it. You can't see the hair on this one because it's stuck in the cape. But um, so that's really exactly the same. Um, but you, I, I'm still pretty sure that this is, I mean, she had the cape, but it could be a cape from another figurine. And uh, couldn't it still be the same uh, Starburst Shira? No, because actually, let's get her to stand. That's a little difficult with the Shira figures. Um, she can move both of her arms freely. Like they are not, they have no mechanism that they function together uh, other than with her. Um, when you move that arm, I mean, I've showed that to you in a different video. Both of her arms go up. And I mean, that's the main thing for this doll or figure. This is the Starburst Shira cape. I mean, whoosh. this is. Uh, the main action figure feature in this case and she cannot move only one arm if you try to do that then it's like uh, I mean she, you can but it's like there is a snap you, you I mean that you shouldn't do that probably so that's the only thing I think you can distinguish um, both of them so is now indeed my third Shira. I bought two, like three different Shira lots and in every one of them there was the main character in which totally makes sense but as I said these are different. This is the first wave Shira. These are the same but now I have uh, one to just stand and one to ride on Swift Wind. Crystal Swift Wind. In our journey across time, Shira and I discovered Crystal World. When I touched the ground in that magical land, I turned to sparkling crystal. In this lot, there was not a swift wind included from the first wave that would belong to the first uh, Shira that I, that I showed you, but this crystal swift wind was included. This is actually from the second wave, the second wave is from 1986. And um, apart from that, none of my uh, pieces here in, the, uh, in this hall um, had their combs or brushes. Other than that, if I exclude that, this is actually a complete uh, crystal swift wind. Uh, it's the horse itself, it's see-through as you can see. Uh, it used to be a little less yellow, so it was a little more pinkish, clear. Um, that's just what happens to, to this type of um, like see-through plastic. And I've not found a way to get this back to its normal stage, but maybe if you know how to do that. My normal methods, like on a retro riding, they don't seem to work on uh, see-through clear plastic. Anyways, also comes with a saddle. 
and comes with both of the wings because they are actually just like attached to the saddle. You can detach them, they are separate pieces. Uh, the hair is not cut, so this is the original length. They didn't come with like longer hair. And it also comes with this little mask here, which is like a brittle and uh, everything's complete. And I, it's, it's like a unicorn, but Pegasus wings, so <laughs> it seems to be an alicorn. And this is actually um, the Swift Wind, the Crystal Swift Wind that would belong to the Starburst Chira. Uh, they also came, I'm pretty sure they were also sold separately. <laughs> yes, they were, but there was also, a, a, as it used to be very popular, um, that they would throw two um, toys together in one package and then sold like, like a gift set. There was definitely a Starburst, Shira, and Crystal, Crystal Swift Wind um, gift pack. So, the figures can sit on the saddles. I mean, their legs are not really, like you cannot really make them ride horses, but the way uh, they are, it, it kind of works. I mean, you can make it work. As a child, you would either way you would hold them and then it would just, it works. It's really cute and I'm really happy about the set. And this is what I said about the Shira. Uh, one of my Shiras can now just stand somewhere like this or like this. And the other one can ride Crystal Swift Wind. Crystal Moonbeam. My sister Crystal Sundancer and I protect Crystal Castle. I guard the castle at night and I use my magical speed to outrun mischief and chase trouble away. Well, Crystal Moonbeam here is in not such a good condition. I mean, I also showed you that uh, the Crystal Swift Wind had a little bit of yellowing going on. Um, this is a little worse in different parts, but I'm still so happy that uh, it also comes with the wings and the saddle. So in this one d does like there is no um, like headpiece to, to this horse. Uh, it was not sold with anything like that. So apart from missing the uh, brush and uh, comb, it's also complete, but you can see it definitely has a problem with the color. It used to be a um, like purple horse. Yes, see-through, but very more like purple. I mean, you can still get a glimpse of it like in the back, but it looks very pale. It has definitely, the time has um, like gotten onto it and I don't know, bleached, yellowed. And uh, also it's not as shiny anymore. Someone like probably dragged it on the, on the ground or something. And you can see inside the head, there is a little bit of mold, um, probably from, like moisture or just people, children taking it into the bath or something because, you know, there are like splits and water can definitely get in there. So I was really, really, I really wanted to not get it into the water because I don't know if you can really split them. I don't know if you should do that. I mean, you can see that it kind of splits open, but I kind of don't want to do that. And also what's missing is uh, there used to be a little plastic wrap around here. And I can see that the, um, the hair from the tail has kind of like got uneven. It was, it had one really, really long streak. So actually it is longer than it used to be here. That's because one side was pulled and it's not really secured in here. So my guess is maybe someone had already taken it ap apart, but I mean, it's, it's still a very, very beautiful piece. It's also like, like the Crystal Swift Wind. Uh, it's from the second wave of Shira, so from 1986. Uh, it was not really sold together with any figure. It just came separately because there were three of these crystal horses uh, in the line. There was one other, Ooh. Um, which, let's put Shira away, <laughs> um, which ha had a uh, color combination of like red and uh, yellow or orangey, yellow, red. Um, also very beautiful. Maybe I can get that one also, then I would have the 
trio complete uh, for now I have these two and what's interesting you can see that by the wings actually for all of the wings that I have now they are sticking more outwards this is the only one where the wings tend to like fold in um, and I first like thought I might have attached the wings the, uh, the wrong way around because I mean I can show that to you with this one you can obviously take the saddle off I'm not gonna do that because it's it's very secured in there but I can still show you here that you can would be able to take the wings apart and I could put this wing at this side but then the other structure would be wrong so it's interesting probably has has to do with uh, storage or where where they were stored or whatever but you can definitely see the difference uh, between the wings very much sticking outward and here the wings very much bent inside but from uh, the shape of the wings this like is, is uh, has the same mold like you know concave like this so I could not put the wings the other way around <laughs> anywho I really really love them and I'm really happy to have both of uh, the crystal horses just missing one of them Angela one of Shira's friends and helpers. Angelic wing guide. Her wings can flap open and closed. I'm really happy to have this Angela also in the lot. I already had an Angela before, but mine obviously was missing the wings. And this is the main action feature of this doll. Uh, you can, I mean, they both, uh, they all have these holes uh, at the back, so you can Put the pack in there um, and then you can attach the wings and when you trigger this I don't want to say button but this thing then they they move and you can really really see how beautiful the movement looks it's it's, it's really cool thing how they designed this they are very shiny very um, a little bit like I don't know pearly they have a pearlescent shine uh, at least the wings themselves not this part and yeah you can take them off and you have to be really really careful um, because it actually has two of these packs here and a lot of uh, the times you find both of them broken mine still has one so I can still attach it um, but still I'm really really um, careful to not break them or not break the one that's missing when I see Angela in the package, it looks like she has one, like um, like her hairstyle is in one um, ponytail back, but I don't know how that would work because it totally gets in the way with the wings. So I decided to just leave her hair open and put, put it to the sides so that it looks a little bit curly, but um, it's not in the way when I attach the wings and obviously I want to put her uh, in my collection with the wings and it's nice when they're not really easy to stand up but her wings are kind of a, an additional um, stability point there so that's really nice um, actually both of them that I have have the correct uh, clothes so this one's a little bit more shiny maybe I put this on this doll but anyways I mean both of them look so pretty good um, and both of the faces really look similar there's not a lot of difference I have seen Angela's with a little bit of a like bigger eyes a little bit more beautiful in my opinion I do not really like their face paints um, but ah yeah and also this one was missing the um, gem she has it in there so overall she is in definitely in the better condition and I'm not sure if I at one point want to sell this one or just keep both of them I think they're both manufactured at the same uh, country so both the same country of origin so there's no difference Casta Spella the enchantress who hypnotizes her hypnotizing disc can spin well there's no disc here <laughs> This Casta Spella here is probably the figure in this whole lot that is uh, the least complete and also has a little bit of paint rub going on. But um, yeah, she, you could imagine that this figure, she's also actually from the first wave, same as Angela, which I didn't say, I think, um, and also the normal Shira. 
and the first Catra. So most of them are from the first wave here in, in this um, lot. And uh, you can imagine that she would, as you can see, she's also got a pack here, um, have a really like huge spinning wheel at her back with this uh, iridescent glitter, um, I don't know, similar to, to what you can see here on Angela, something, you know, this material in um, yellow mostly. So that would be her action feature that you had this spinning wheel. And um, I gave her this really like, like ponytail, like um, very like strict, straight. I think she came with a like ponytail or something similar um, backwards, which I always think is strange when you have these dolls that have actually attachments attachments to the back but as mine does not have anything at the back right now she's pretty she feels pretty naked because that's what actually her color this um these overknees in very very light cream color and then this uh, orange body and she also has a orange gem but she has very bold eye makeup i really think that from the first wave um most of the figures do not have the most beautiful face paints. Uh, she's an exception. I really like how her face is painted. It looks really bold um, and really beautiful. So what I will do actually is uh, I have this one piece of Fantastic Fashions, which um, Shira, Princess of Power, had a lot of uh, fashion packs. They were called the Fantastic Fashions and uh, I have only this one, but the color matches really well because there's this orange in there. We'll probably put this on her and in this lot, I mean, this is not from the lot, this was from a separate lot that I picked up. I have this separate shield, which actually goes to the um, to the figure Pika Blue, which she is from the second wave. Uh, I don't have her at all. And so I will probably put this on her. So this is the typical Shira shield accessory uh, a different mold for all of them and uh, in different colors they have this um i don't know claw thing that you can just use like clip it's more like a clip and then she has a shield and let's put her trousers on not her but now i decided that they will be her trousers I think that looks pretty good on her with her blue makeup the blue shield and the dark purple um, that really goes together and then the, the orange here and there so that's her new look and I really like it Casta Spella Perfuma the sensational flower maiden make her flower bloom smell her perfume Perfuma here is actually one of my favorites from this lot. I mean, I have quite a lot of favorites, but she really has a beautiful color scheme. And to be quite honest, she is, yeah, as uh, incomplete as uh, Casa Spella as well. She does not have any of her accessories or clothing pieces or anything, but uh, I don't think that this matters so much with this figure because she's got a very like bold color scheme. I mean, bold in in the terms of you, you see it on uh, in contrast of her body she uh, is very pastel actually i really like that um you can hear it from from her name perfuma yeah she's um i don't know if she really was scented but it's like the character <laughs> um and she would have a beautiful flower at her back as you can see it here she would you would put it in and then it's like a rose like with petals that would grow out of her back that you could open up really beautiful thing um, her hairstyle uh, actually I think she still had her original hairstyle but it looked very very like I don't like her <laughs> original hairstyle it's like two braids one on the top left and one on the bottom right and then two pigtails and with strange knots and uh, I don't know why you would try to recreate it I mean I gave her this high ponytail with one knot and then two um, strands of hair laying down. I think she looks very nice and uh, to me it's not as bad um, that she doesn't have any of her accessories because she's a very beautiful color scheme. She's as well from the second wave, so from 1986, where you can see that the figures got a little bit more pastel and um, even more girly.
sweet bee. She is honey of a guide. Antennas and turnaround wings glow in the dark. While I said that Perfuma is one of my favorites from this a uh, lot, I have to say um, Sweet Bee here is actually my favorite. And that actually was already pretty clear even before I had her because she was sticking out when I when I saw the picture. I could remember that she was in there and I know and I knew that she glows in the dark. Um, I didn't know what exactly what parts of her would glow in the dark. Uh, her wings do. I can show that to you. So you can actually um, attach them just by velcro so they they don't need to get in a hole at the back or something and you can also um, imagine and decide which way to put them on because uh, the other side also has a velcro so you can also decide if you want to see the glittery part in the front or the other one I, I have not decided but I think hmm. <laughs> I mean this side glows in the dark I don't know. This is a wonderful pastel, but very strong, a little bit like pastel neon. Uh, this um, like tone here. This is like a like a salmon pink, and then this really uh, a little bit neon uh, yellow. And her hair is amazing. So this is her original hair style factory curl. She's a little bit loose around the waist, to be honest. But I mean, maybe that's also how all of them wear. I don't know. Uh, she has her original clothing, so this skirt piece and this little uh, choker. Her eye makeup is also really, really bold. Um, so I, mean, I don't know these 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 eyebrows. I mean, she 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 supposed to be a bee. <laughs> so I don't know. It just kind of mimics that with these. I don't know why. I think, but it looks very 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 appropriate for her theming overall and yeah she would also have a headpiece that's missing sadly uh, like two little antennas that would look her make her even more look like a bee sweet bee also from the second wave so I mean you can still you can definitely see that that this is a color scheme that that they decided when they went for the second wave even more girly more sparkly glow-in-the-dark crystal horses etc Flatterina, another one of Shira's friends. Beautiful lookout flies with fluttering wings. A pull cord on her back would make her wings flutter. Well, Flatterina here actually is probably, well, also one of my favorites. I don't know. Sweet Bee, Perfuma and Flatterina, like they are all so beautiful, uh, super pastel. She is same as uh, the two mentioned ones from the second wave. And uh, she, as you can see, has these really beautiful, like soft lavender and soft light um, uh, orange colors. And she has these giant butterfly wings. Um, they also attach to her back via um, packs. I actually don't want to take this off right now, but I mean, I can. That's this no I don't want to <laughs> um, because I'm always afraid to break something um, you can actually like detach these uh, a you can really detach these these uh, wings here from from this um, construction here and you can also attach and reattach them from the plastic so when I got this package actually they were upside not, not really upside down but uh, the purple um, part shows to the front and I absolutely didn't want that. I wanted that uh, the pattern showed like to the front. So I changed that. So I was glad that that would work. So you could attach and deattach them from, from, from this um, plastic part here. And um, yeah, she comes with her little um, skirt and her little choker. And uh, the wings are actually really cool also a little bit glittery yeah there you can see it so they they are like in 
in the soft, no, it's not soft, but in this little plastic, there is embedded like the, it's not on, like slapped onto the wing. It's like really in, that's really the material itself that's glittery. It's really beautiful. It does not show really from the back. It, you can just see it from the front. Uh, concerning her hairstyle, oh my goodness, she looks already a little bit. <laughs> well, I, I, I think she came with open hair. I couldn't really see if she had any crazy hairstyles. It's a little bit wavy. She really has this interesting hair color that is a little bit, uh, there are little purple streaks in and the rest is also this very muted purple, almost gray. Looks in a way pretty modern, like, you know, all of these uh, grayish hairstyles that you sometimes see nowadays. Um, but, well, you can already see it. This uh, should actually not be like this. Actually, there is a mechanism in there and this would be actually a pull string. Um, I think you could maybe like pull it also from the top and then to the back and then the wings would flutter. I mean, she would really make her name, like really uh, give her name justice, Flutterina, and um, that's broken. I, I also don't know how to fix it because I don't know how to, I would need to open this compartment here, which I really don't want to do because I'm afraid to break more than, I mean, already, I mean, break something that I cannot fix again. So it's just out here. It's, it's still okay. Obviously, she is the one that's the most difficult to like stand up on her own. That's you saw it. Uh, she always needs to be very much like lend to the to the front. Then it works. But I mean, you have to lean her against something. Then it would probably work better. She is wonderful. Look at her makeup. This is really uh, the typical, you know. Beauty of Shira, Princess of Power figurines from the second wave. Um, I don't have any from the third wave, but the first wave figures sometimes had a little bit of, you know, the face paint was a little bit questionable. She is wonderful. Flutterina. Arrow, the true blue horse that flies bow to victory. Arrow released in the first Shira wave, so you can see it's not a crystal horse. This has a normal um, plastic body, um, and the whole, obviously, the whole um, mold looks very much like the Barbie horses. I mean, it's made by Mattel, so it's probably just a scaled down version of the typical Barbie horse um, mold. But um, it really is, is beautiful together with the Shira figures. And um, yeah, this one belongs to the male character, to Bo, so Arrow and Bo, haha. <laughs> Which interestingly enough, I also have um, the accessories that go to the male character, to the male figure, to Bo. <laughs> um, and I have Arrow. And um, I actually also have the mini comic here. That was also in here. Um, what what is a mini comic? What you well, um, it's very very interesting. Every Shira figure, as well as I don't know, probably also uh, the horses etc., um, was released with a mini comic that explained a little bit about the character. So you can see here in this um, comic that was the introduction of Bo, which this was the comic that was released with him. Um, the idea actually comes from the like the brother toy line from Masters of the Universe before they knew that there would be also a cartoon series which um, the Filmation um, He-Man cartoon series like went afterwards into the She-Ra cartoon series obviously we know that but before they knew that they didn't know how to like translate the um, like w what these characters are and why would the children get attached to them what so they packaged all of the He-Man, the Master of the Universe figures with a mini comic and they continued that with the She-Ra uh, toy line. So it's a little, like you can see, it's a little rough. It definitely has seen some water at some point. Um, and the pages, they're not really, I don't know, stapled together. They were glued together. So yeah, they fall out. Uh, but it's, it's really thing to have there you can see Shira and 
and and the beginning here is so Catra and at the back you can see some of the figures from the first wave yeah that was uh, Bo from the first wave it was released uh, with this and uh, probably he was also released together with Arrow I'm not exactly sure on the releases like if this uh, also had a separate release the horse or not but you can see Shira, Double Trouble, Frosta, uh, Katra, Casta, Spella, Angela, Glimmer and Cole so interesting that I have almost everything to this release just the action figure is missing bow is missing but here we have arrow it's probably my favorite of the horses that i have um, right now it's a beautiful baby blue color i think my camera makes it a little look a little bit more intense right now but um it does not uh, have any like mask or something like uh, the swift wind that we saw it's correct like this of course missing brush and uh, comb but also comes with the typical saddle the saddles always have the same mold the wings as well they're just in a different molded in a different plastic and then painted differently so this one's a golden saddle and the wings are blue red and gold and the accessories are gold as well so here we have it again <laughs> bow and arrows um, and also here the hair is not cut it's uh, the original length and this is in, in the beautiful pristine condition I cannot say anything negative about this one it's probably my favorite horse um, from this lot Ketra the villain of the Princess of Paw toy line and uh, the personal enemy of Shira. She is the jealous beauty. She can become a troublemaking cat. I was really happy to find out that this Ketra here um, comes with one of her accessories. So this is her clothing part, so a little furry skirt with a tail attachment because Ketra is supposed to be like, you know, a cat. Uh, cat lady, so she's a crazy cat lady. Um, but still, there's a lot of missing pieces. She has a really cool cat mask and um, a shield in silver that would have a cat on it. Uh, obviously, comb and brush. Oh, no, not brush. This the figures just came with a comb. Um, I have no Jira combs whatsoever. But still, uh, really happy because I have already actually one. Uh, actually, this was mine that I had before. Um, missing everything so kind of naked she, she still looks cool and I think her hair is a little bit in a better condition than hers and uh, from the makeup you can also see they are not completely the same they are painted a little bit different she has she's way more bold way more green and um, her uh, blush is very intense other than with her it's not really that intense so I could yeah, you can also see she uh, her rooting in the front is not as nicely done with, with hers. So there's pros and cons to both. But when you look at um, the figures back, this is where you can see the country of origin. So both of them actually say Taiwan. So there's, there's not a difference. Both of them say Taiwan 84. They're obviously the Shira from the Shira and the Katra from the first wave. 1984 um, and interestingly enough so this was the one that I had before there was another Ketra in there Here you can see also kind of naked um, and she again also has a different face uh, paint a little bit not completely different but again it's different to both of them so she has no under no lining on the lower eyelid and she has for example and um, then I looked at her, is she also just a Taiwan? And I was really pleased because she is actually a France. So there is a difference. Her hair is not as good as with the other uh, two because it's a little more cut or like thin in the bottom, but I still like, I think I did okay. Um, and you can also see now that her gemstone in the front here uh, is way lighter. So it's more of a purplish pink while the other two definitely have a really deep magenta. So um, there's a variant. I mean, uh, I don't know actually about a Shira variants as much as I've heard of um, the 
bo the boyish uh, brother toy line, you could say, of uh, Princess of Power, so Masters of the Universe. There's a lot of variants of different um, like country of origins, and they are really collectors who go deep into that field. Same as with ponies, same as with ponies, but I don't know if a, a France Catra is something that's a little bit more rare, but to me it's interesting, so um, I might sell this one at one point, but uh, keep these or whatever, because they are really different. That's really interesting. The elegant storm that flies Catra to exciting adventures. Storm was another one of the horses from the first release, so the first wave or series or whatever you want to call that. Um, so there were three horses that were not <laughs> see-through as well, so the second wave had the crystal horses, the first wave had the, you know, opaque, normal um, plastic horses, um, Swiftwind from, from Shira as well, don't have that one, but you saw, uh, you saw um, uh, arrow and this is storm storm belongs to catra so the villain <laughs> and um, oh my goodness the saddle is not really secure <laughs> but uh, you can already see it it's it's it has the same black hair as catra uh, but still has a very nice pearlescent body and um, the saddle is molded in uh, silver i mean yeah it's more like gray but the wings then also are uh, white this uh, salmony color and silver and one of the wings strangely enough um, was really sticky this one and um, when I bought this lot um, she actually told me that um, a lot of the pieces would be like uh, very sticky and uh, in a bad condition but to be honest I, I just found that this one wing was uh, like this it's when you know it's it's a very soft plastic you can bend it so there was a lot of plasticizer used uh, for this one so it's the plasticizer that leaks that that just happens over time with some plastics it happens also with some my little ponies etc they get like very shiny and sticky and uh, i washed it and then put a lot of baby powder on it that's why there's a little bit of um, you can still see that a little bit of baby powder on there uh, but that um, actually helps a lot and prevents it from more um, like leaking of the plasticizer so now also this one is almost complete also this one does not have one of those masks and um, like uh, brittle bridles and nothing like that uh, just brush and comb and uh, I'm pretty sure this also was released with the first wave Katra so with her together um, so again same as with the Shira Put the figure on there it's not the best fit but uh, it actually is quite secure and um, yeah storm uh, from 1984 the horse of catra Claudine. This glamorous cat carries Catra to adventure. Claudine. She has been on my wish list for the longest time. She is so special. Um, there is nothing really out there that could compare. She She's not just you know like a barbie horse or like a my little pony or because she's very pink and girly but also not in a very cute way because she looks more realistic and she's a lion so super 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 interesting toy obviously uh she's based on um the uh like steeds of uh, he-man and skeletor sort of uh Battle Cat and uh, Panther from the Masters of the Universe line. Uh, she is a different uh, mold though. So here's my really, <laughs> really bad condition, but my um, Panther. 
and um, you can see it is indeed very similar so just from like the feel they are kind of the same height and um, the same size in general but the molds are different so her tail is very more curly she has um, the um, the legs to the different side and um, also obviously her face is different but it's clearly that they wanted to have a girl version of a battle cat and panthor and uh, same as panthor uh, claudine is flocked and i was at first sometimes when i saw claudine's online i was like oh no this one doesn't have a flocked face anymore so the flocking has coming off on the face and um, no the face the head was never flocked so it never had uh, this fuzzy overcoat and i actually had no idea how beautiful her face would be she has gemstones in her eyes so like a twinkle eye pony but she's a twinkle eye lion you could say her eyes with this um like with these uh, lashes and then the green um, um the green paint wow it's it's really crazy um i'm not the biggest fan of uh, the hair color you could say it's very it's not pink enough in my uh book it's, it's more of a blonde like a like a strawberry blonde and it kind of clashes a little bit with the rest of the body but she is amazing and she was kind of the selling point of this lot i mean not really all of it was the selling point but when i saw that this toy would be in there it was totally worth it because she is not one that you can easily find over here for a reasonable price um of course she is not complete at all because she same as uh, the horses would actually have a cool saddle actually a really intricate sculpt very high with a elaborate um, like platform to sit also would go down here so very interesting in in silver and uh, she would also come i think with a little bow <laughs> in silver and uh, she is actually the steed of ketra i mean she's Petra is supposed to be a cat kind of girl and obviously the lion the lion makes total sense uh Ketra in the first wave as you remember as i said actually had a storm so also a horse and uh, this one i think you can also see in the formation cartoon um claudine i think she i don't know if she made it into the formation cartoon i don't actually think so um but she definitely has made it onto the uh, German audio cassette tapes of uh, She-Ra Princess of Power. I only have one, but she's definitely in there as a character, not only at the cover, but uh, she is... Oh, you can see a little bit of the saddle on the side, so saddle, saddle. Um, and uh, She-Ra and Catra, they are like uh, mickering, like, ah, you are too slow, uh, you always want me to go from A to B in a super speed and blah, blah. So they are, they are kind of uh, mickering and they are kind of friends, but also like not really uh, the same opinion really funny um, this is you can see it's not the catra that i uh, got in this lot but i show it to you here because um this is as claudine is from the second wave so from 86 this is the catra that goes to um claudine it's actually the scratch and sound catra that's her action feature i've showed her to you in another video already but um, she would be the one I think that you could get in a two pack so in in this gift pack i mean she can't really sit very well on her without the saddle but it kind of works so uh, they have almost the same color which really makes it a good match to the body and to the body of catra and of claudine and this is a beautiful piece i love this so much um this is my favorite part of this whole uh, haul it was one of my vintage toy toy grails and then this last part here uh, i can't show it to you with any other um any others of of, of the um, toys that were in this lot it's it's one wing that would go to the original first released uh swift wind so the pegasus slash unicorn <laughs> of shira directly so a light pink one but you have seen a lot of the wings so um i just have one if i ever find a swift wind with 
saddle and one wing I have the other wing I think the chances are really small <laughs> that I can use this at one point so but yeah here it is My goodness so with this one box full of Shira stuff I have like doubled and tripled my uh, Shira Princess of Power collection and I have got so many of the pieces that I've wanted for so long so I have now a couple of the horses including the wings including the saddle I have Claudine which was as I said it was, was one of my like or grails you could say for the longest time and I have a couple of figures that I didn't even know would be very very cool because like sweet pea here she glows in the dark so uh, I will have a lot of fun with now rearranging the shelf where I have my Shira um, Princess of Power stuff on anyways let's see if it's big enough to fit all of the stuff so um, that will be my evening now rearranging the shelf but that's always fun, right? That's the fun part of uh, collecting how to display it. So I hope you enjoyed this little uh, different kind of haul video from my side. And um, if you like what you saw, then please give it a thumbs up because that really helps the channel out. That um, makes it possible to for the videos to show up on more people's feeds and uh, for other people to um, discover my channel. Um, but also tell me in the comments down below if, if you're into Shira or this is stuff that you remember from your childhood. As I said, it's not really, it wasn't part of my childhood, but I think it's, it's very, very beautiful stuff. Um, and yeah, so I'm now off on vacation. See you real soon in two or three weeks. <laughs> Thank you for watching and um, may the toys be with you. Bye.